We're going to upgrade Zone Director via the CLI from version 10.2.0 to version 10.2.1. Before we start, we'd like to cover some recommendations for you. It's always a good idea to review the release notes. In the release notes, we're going to find things such as supported platforms. This is going to give you information on access points that are supported in this release or access points that are no longer supported. We're going to find upgrade information or details on how to navigate the upgrade process. We're going to find enhancements or features that have been added, resolved issues or bug fixes, and client interoperability. This is going to ensure that your clients or end stations are going to have a seamless integration through the upgrade. Last, we want to talk about software copy real quick. It's important to understand that the image is going to be copied to Zone Director via TFTP. In turn, Zone Director is then going to transfer the image to the access points via FTP. Any type of firewalls or access lists or filtering that we're doing within our network will need to be validated prior to the upgrade. FTP is enabled by default, but we're going to validate that it's on. So once we've logged into the CLI, we enter enable enter config, enter system, and then enable FTP, and then FTP ANON or FTP anonymous. All right, let's get started. So we have two terminal windows open on our screen. The window on the left we're going to use to start a continuous ping to the controller. This is a best practice that we should always follow. On the right, we're going to use this window to SSH to the controller. So we're going to SSH to the controller, 10.177.81.94. Now we'll log in with our admin credentials and type enable. As I mentioned earlier, let's start a continuous ping to the controller. This will help us understand that the controller is live during the upgrade, when it is offline during the reboot, and when it comes back up online after the reboot's completed. Let's go back to our SSH session. We're going to run a show sysinfo. This output gives us great information about the controller. Most importantly, we're concerned with the current version of software that we're running. We can see that here. OK, we're ready to start. Before we do that, we just wanted to verify that the version that we're running now doesn't require a migration path. In other words, we don't have to hop from release to release to get to the targeted release we're after. Now what we're going to do is we're going to back the configuration file up to our TFTP server. So to do that, we need to enter debug. And from debug, we're just going to run the save hyphen config command, point it to our TFTP server address, and then name the file. In this example, we're going to name the file backup. We're not going to go into details on how to configure TFTP here. But if you have issues with this step, you need to check firewall rules, access lists, and verify that your TFTP server is configured correctly. Great, our backup was successful. The amount of time that this takes is really going to depend on the size of your configuration and how many access points you have attached. Now we're going to download the Zone Director software image off of our TFTP server to the Zone Director. We do that using the FW underscore upgrade command with some different flags. Hyphen P is for the protocol, in this case it's TFTP. Hyphen S is for the address of our TFTP server. Hyphen N is for the file name. As we can see here, the file name is 10.2.1. Once we execute that command, we see that the starting CLI upgrade process begins. Zone Director is now downloading the software image from the TFTP server. As you can see, we've sped the clip up. Once the download is successful, it's going to verify the image. After the image is verified, it just wants you to confirm that you want to upgrade the controller. Here we hit enter and it begins the upgrade. As the upgrade process completes, we're going to lose connectivity to our CLI session, as you can see here. Once that happens, we're now losing pings to the controller. Once the pings resume, it's safe to assume that we can reconnect to the controller's GUI and verify that the upgrade was successful. Great, it's pinging again. Let's jump into the GUI and make sure that we can see the new version running and that everything looks to be up and operational. OK, it's up and we're in the GUI. We see that we're running version 10.2.1, but we also see that our access point is offline. Remember, once the Zone Director upgrade is complete, Zone Director then upgrades the access points attached to it. If this fails, again, we need to check firewall rules or access lists. So we're going to navigate to access points, and we're going to verify that this access point is currently upgrading. As we can see here, the version is still running 10.2.0. 
When we scroll to the top of the page and click the refresh button, we can see that the access point has moved from disconnected to now upgrading firmware. If we scroll down, we can note that the firmware running on the access point is now 10.2.1. Remember, if you have issues with this step, you need to check FTP filtering within your network from the controller to the access point. Final step, scroll back to the top of the page, click the refresh button again, and we can see that our access point is now online. That's it. We've upgraded Zone Director via the CLI, and Zone Director has in turn upgraded the access point connected to it. Check the description box below for great resources located on the Ruckus Support Portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.